Welcome back to Come College Online Ministry and Encouragement. I'm Reverend Jewel Williams with our Wednesday Word for April 4th. Our theme is a changed mind is a changed life. And our scripture is found in Romans 12 and 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and prove and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Please go to the website and as you'll notice on the screen, we do have a new address, which we're launching the update of our website in this month of April. And it's still Williams Innovative Network, except it's at we, uh, webly.com. And you'll see that on our site. So it'll be a little easier to access the Bible study. You'll go and there's a link that says Bible study. You can go right in there. It's in a blog-like form. And if you have any questions you can answer them right in there. And, and also the Wednesday messages will be right on that link. So um, this month of April, we'll be looking at having the mindset that Christ did. One meaning for the word mindset is approach. So Jesus approached different groups in his ministry on earth. And as we strive to be Christ-like, we want to learn how to approach different people the way that Jesus did. So our messages for our, our Bible study for this month of April are on the mind, having the Jesus mindset. And so today we're going to look at Jesus and the multitudes. And I'm reading from Matthew, excuse me, Matthew 9, 35 through 38. And it reads, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And so Jesus will see is uh, giving you a little background. We see Jesus, Jesus in his ministry. He's going about the cities and the villages and his teaching and their synagogues. And he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom and he's healing every sickness and disease. So Jesus do, is about doing what he was sent on earth to do. He's at the beginning of his ministry. And so he's doing what the Lord, what God has sent Jesus to do. But one of the things we want to look at is that Jesus' ministry or the office or the calling did not stop him forever from ever understanding the, the source or the purpose, uh, the reason why he was here. And so the first point I want to bring out as we look at having the mindset of Jesus and, and looking at Jesus and the multitude is Jesus' ministry, his office, his calling, um, his purpose did not overshadow his, his the reason why he was here, the source of his purpose. So his office and reason are one. And what I mean by that is real easy as believers to get so caught up in serving Jesus and, and doing for Jesus that we kind of leave Jesus out of what we're doing and why we're doing. And so what happens in those instances, we can get so busy in our churches, you know, singing in the choir or uh, being on the usher board, being a deacon, being a minister. We can so get caught up in those offices, our ministries, that we forget the source of why we do everything. And not only the source, but then we, we forget where this is actually leading us to, what it's supposed to affect. And Jesus didn't forget that. What was the reason? Well, the reason was he came for the needs of people. So him teaching in the synagogue, him preaching the gospel, him healing sicknesses and diseases and setting people free was for the needs of the people. It wasn't to, it wasn't about him, but it was about the needs of the people. And that moves us to the next point. People's needs moved Jesus. And we see that in verse 36 where he says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. And so his compassion, his love moved Jesus into action. We see that he would not have taught or he would not have 
preached had he not been moved by the needs of people to know the truth. He would not have healed sickness and disease if he was not moved with the plight of people and a, and a desire to bring them to wholeness. Jesus would not have died on the cross had he not been moved with compassion and saw that we were lost and in need of a savior. So Jesus' compassion, and in fact, he is a compassionate savior. Jesus' compassion moved him to meet people's needs. If we're going to have the mindset of Christ, we have to see the needs of people, pray for Jesus-like mindset, and then be moved with compassion, love, into action to do something for those needs. In other words, we can no longer look at people that are going through situations and circumstances and simply just say, you know, gossip about them or just talk about them or say that's a shame. We really have to now say, okay, it's a shame, but what am I going to do to make a difference? And then the third point I want to bring out is Jesus' compassion requires response from his followers. And so one of the things we want to see about this too is that not only do we want to be moved like Jesus was, but we also want to know that there's a requirement for us to be moved with compassion. How do I know that? Well, in verse 37, after Jesus saw the multitude, he, he was moved with compassion. What was what moved him? He said because they were fainting, they were getting tired. They were scattered abroad. There was no unity. They were There was no purpose. They were just there. And he said, as sheep having no shepherd, he was moved because the people had no one to leave them and to help them to follow what needed to, uh, what they needed to be following in order to walk right with God. And so when he saw this, he said to his disciples, the harvest is plenteous, but the labor is few. In other words, there's a great need of, for the people, the multitude, there were so many people, there was a great need. He saw that great need, but he realized there were not a lot of people willing or able to step forth to be able to help these people in this place that they found themselves. And so Jesus' response to the, to the disciples is that we should pray that the Lord of the harvest, who is God, will send some laborers in to his harvest. So that's what we're here for. Somebody prayed that God would send those to the world to reach them. Well, that's where you and I are here. That's why we're saved. It goes back really to the main thing about having this mindset. This mindset requires you and I to have an outlook to see what God desires us to do. And so we're going to have a changed mind to have a changed life. Then we have to say, Jesus, help me to see the multitude of people, the multitude. And guess what? Inside of the multitude are many people. There were young, there were old, there were women, there were men, there were sick. Those were, those were possessed with demonic, um, with demons. There were those that were angry. There were those that were hungry. There were those that were tired. There were those that were seeking. There were those that were just there spectating. The multitude covers a lot of people. And so you and I have to be ready that when we go forth, there are going to be a lot of people that we're going to run into. But the one thing that we know is Jesus had the same response. He saw each one of them and he was moved with compassion because he saw them as lost without a shepherd. Initial shepherd, not with, without him being the shepherd of their souls, but also they did not have anyone to lead them into the truth, someone to walk with them, to disciple them, and to help them to become Christ-like. And so our mindset today is, we need to ask Jesus, ask the Lord to help us see the multitudes, the many people, the way that he saw them. And he saw their needs. He had compassion on them and he was moved with that compassion to do something about it. These are going to be some really great lessons. And as we're going into the, the month, you know, this is the month of Easter. But we also want to remember that Jesus equips us so that we can do all these things. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for giving us the mindset to have this mindset of Christ so that we can see the multitude, the many people. Help us to be moved with compassion when we see their needs and then move to do something, to pray and to be your hands in action in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.